Hey everyone, I want to talk about choosing the metrics or visualizations to actually put into your report or your dashboard. Uh, this is something a lot of people struggle with. You've got a big old table of data like this, you don't really know what to do with it. Um, you know what's in there, you know what the dimensions and metrics are, but you're just like not sure what to build with it and what kind of narrative to start building, what story you're trying to tell. So I'm going to give you just an easy system I have for handling this sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't work for every project, but it works for the vast majority of them I found and go through just that process with you really quick so that you can apply it to your own projects. And it all starts with something kind of simple that gets overlooked a lot, and that's understanding your audience. Before you even start your project, you need to know who you're building this for and why you're building it for them. And that doesn't just include who's using the dashboard. It also includes who's greenlighting the project, who's approving budget, who are you reporting to about the project. You gotta understand all those people so you don't just build something useful, but you build something that actually is going to get budget approved and going to get adopted into the organization. So start focusing, start by focusing on the actual user, the person whose job it's going to affect, the person who's going to be checking the report regularly. What is their job? What's their level of proficiency? What level of understanding do they have of the data they're looking at? Uh, do they understand good data practices? That sort of thing. And you also have to go a little deeper and ask questions about like their job and how they fit into the organization. Like, is this tool actually gonna make their life easier or is this just like another painful task getting thrown at them that makes their job even harder? And if it is making their job harder, what can you do to make it easier for them? What can you build that's actually gonna help them perform better, make their life easier, that sort of thing? What kind of expectations do they have for the project? And and how much how much of their job is dedicated to this tool you're making? Is it just a tiny thing that doesn't matter or is it like a critical part of what they do? Now, once you have that down, start going into who are the people that are gonna be green lighting the project? Who are the people that are gonna be you're reporting to? And what you just need to ask is if somebody's green lighting the project and approving budget, what do they need to get out of it so that they feel good about spending that money on what you're doing? What is the end result they need to see? And if it's somebody who you're reporting to, what do they need to see to feel like progress is being made, like you're doing something impactful? Understanding all this stuff is so critical and you wanna do it way before you even start designing anything. And once you have this understanding, we get into the stage of telling them a story. And now that you understand them, you can tell them a story in their own language, in a language that they understand. Because a lot of time folks in data, they talk in a sort of detached, data-focused way that doesn't represent like the operational realities of a business. And when they do that, they distance themselves. They say things that are confusing, that can be misinterpreted, and they don't really, they don't really tap into how things truly operate. So speak in a language that people understand, that they're gonna listen to, that it's something that they can kind of sync with. And we're gonna use that language to start building a narrative pyramid. What I mean by that is starting with just two to three words. What are you trying to build? In this case, a Facebook ad performance dashboard. Then go a little deeper, maybe a sentence. Hey, how effective are my current and previous Facebook ad campaigns? Awesome, okay, a little deeper. Then we go a little bit deeper. Hey, how are they affecting awareness, engagement, conversions? Are they better or worse? What are they costing me? What are the top? And we're just gonna keep going until we essentially have the bulk of what we think matters included in this. It's important when you do this to understand your audience. What are they using this for? Why does it matter to them? And when you understand that, you can start answering these kinds of questions and start filling in the pyramid. You're not necessarily gonna use every single one of these in your final dashboard or your final report, right? But this is just giving you the guidance to kind of think about what matters and more importantly, what the hierarchy is of the data that you're presenting. And the hierarchy part is critically important and it's why we use this pyramid structure. So I'm gonna explain this by showing you how you might map this into an actual dashboard. So the top level of our pyramid, Facebook ad performance, typically is gonna be kind of core metrics, core KPIs, stuff that somebody just wants described in plain, non-confusing language. In this case, it's like, I've, I've spelled it out for them. How many people have seen your ads? There's the number. How many people interacted with them? Here's the number. How many people had conversions that we were attributed to the ads? That's this many, right? This is keeping it simple and it's capturing high level metrics. It's the kind of thing a C-suite person might glance at so they kind of know where things are. Um, 
nothing confusing there. We keep it straightforward. Now, as we start to move down the pyramid, that's where we start thinking about like visualizations and layout. Our top of the pyramid are our top level metrics. We wanna emphasize them. We wanna put them somewhere super obvious, set them apart, make them a different color, make the text bigger, whatever, so that people are, have their eye drawn there first. For this next stage, we have to get a little more creative. So here I'm starting to get into deeper performance metrics, stuff that maybe somebody with a little more domain knowledge is gonna to start to care about. Hey, how much are we actually spending and how's that changing over time? That kind of stuff. How are our overall engagements changing over time? And because we're going a little deeper, we're including this time series element. This is really important. If you have data and it's plotted over time or it's reported over time in your table, you're probably gonna to wanna to show it where it's moving over time. That doesn't mean you have to do a fancy chart or anything. These are just trend lines. But what we're answering when we show something over time is we're saying, is this higher or lower than usual? Is this unusually high or unusually low? Where do we sit? Are we moving generally up, generally down? We're kind of answering those basic questions. We're not getting into the nitty gritty. We're not labeling these really clearly. We're not doing something for like deep analysis. We're just, we're plotting direction and we're kind of showing where we stand in terms of what's normal. Um, then as you go even deeper, this is where you start thinking about a couple of things. One is maybe more complex visualizations. If you're going really deep into analysis, this is where you start having to have maybe a slightly more complex understanding of different visualization types. Um, if you're building, you know, really complex bubble charts with, you know, I don't know, uh, color gradients and size reflecting different different metrics or something like that. This is where those would be applied. But oftentimes it's actually simpler than that. For the deepest level of analysis of our data, we often just need to show each row of our table. Like in this case, all this data is aggregated Facebook ad performance. So we might just show each individual ad in a row. So somebody who wants to go a little deeper and really understand these niche questions can jump in here and look at each individual ad in each individual post. Along with this, we might include some other visualizations. You might want to show, hey, how many posts are being made over time, that sort of thing. And that's as simple as maybe a bar chart, a line chart, a trend line, that sort of thing. But the content itself is just thinking about, hey, what is the most granular level with which we can examine the data and providing that? And one last thing in all of this, when you're going into deeper levels of analysis, you're often going to handle that with filters. So in this case, we have a campaign filter that then lets somebody not just see aggregate performance, but individual campaign performance. This kind of thing can be really important if you're providing tables of data like this. If somebody's got a table of data like this, they probably don't wanna see every single post ever made. So you're gonna to have to include some kind of date range filter, maybe a campaign filter, an ad grouping filter, something like that to make it useful. Anyway, this is not uh, this is not necessarily a science. It's in large part art, right? You're kind of having to do a creative exercise here. But what I found is that although this isn't all super straightforward, right? I'm not just giving you the answer. Here's how you make every single dashboard look good every single time. What this does is it gives you that seed when you get started of saying, hey, now I kind of know what I'm trying to present here and I can frame it and think a little bit more critically about how I structure it and what I present and what I put on the page. Anyway, I hope that helps everybody. Um, I will be doing more of these types of posts about general dashboard layout, how you can apply it to things like Excel, Google Sheets, Looker Studio, that sort of thing. Um, I also have templates, a lot of them kind of similar to the ones you saw in this post, um, which kind of help you learn this stuff. And I send those out for free on a newsletter. It's totally free. I just send them out to help people learn. I'll have a link below. You can sign up if you're interested in that. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear from you, see what you're working on. If you have questions about what to put on your own dashboards, I'd be happy to help. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good one, bye.